What's up guys? After a long hiatus due to some technical issues on our end, this is Xander Bennett here with another Rare Candy Roundup. Definitely hoping to make this more of a consistent series here on the channel, but if in case you guys did not hear, almost all of Rare Candy's files were lost off of Eric's flash drive, so Eric was remaking a lot of the graphics for these videos so finally gonna get back into the swing of things doing rare candy roundup and boy do we have a lot to talk about because lots of events have happened and new cards have been spoiled and this is just going to be a great time so strap in we got some awesome stuff coming up and i cannot wait to talk about it all right gonna quickly run through the last few tournaments in case you haven't seen anything recently the international in sao paulo had 630 masters happened the weekend before Thanksgiving, and it was won by Zora Control. Uh, Danny Altvia played this deck. Um, the deck technically made finals for both players, but due to some other incidences, that player was no longer in the tournament. But uh, Zora Control made a strong finish there, as well as Caleb Gedimer getting top eight with the list. And the deck just seemed pretty solid overall, just having a lot of answers to deal with the decks that were coming into that metagame. Just um, Forcing decks to not activate their beast rings just limited the amount of energies that they could put in play and they were able to Dumpster that tournament with Zora control moving on forth um, There was a regional the following weekend in Roanoke, Virginia That was won by Jimmy Pendarvis. This is his second regionals win of the season and he won it playing Gardevoir Swampert Alola Ninetales. This is a really cool deck that Robin Schultz first played at a regional over in Europe. It just runs nine tails along with the Swampert with power draw. It's a discard a card, draw three cards, and just get your consistency engine. Comes from that Swampert along with Brooklet Hill and just four copies of Cynthia. So the deck is really interesting overall. Another cool thing about this tournament is that this was the first time that we saw Lost March make up a significant portion of the metagame. Lost March made top eight. Um, this is the first tournament that this deck really broke out. There was also a top 32 finish of the deck and a few more, I believe, in top 64. So pretty cool overall that we're seeing new archetypes still break out as Lost Thunder is coming out, kind of exactly like what we expected. This most recent weekend in Brisbane, there was a regionals in Australia, where the finals was a Decidueye Zorark Ninetales mirror match that in the end was won by Angus Johnson. Um, both of those players were on Decidueye Ninetales, as well as Clifton Go making top four with Decidueye Ninetales Zorark. So, really solid p choice from these players, as well as two Grambles, two Malamars, and a Zorark Lycanroc making up the top eight of this regionals in Brisbane. So, that'll be the last tournament summary for our current standard moving over to japan though japan did have another huge event very similar to the champions league that we saw earlier this champions league was won by zorak lycanroc and showed off a bunch of new cards that we've seen in japan but we haven't necessarily reached over here particularly the new zapdos taking up a i think about a third of the metagame exactly in this top 64 just kind of ridiculous to see how much of this deck was being played um, yes, there were tw 23 copies of the Zapdos deck in top 64, making up 38% of the metagame. Um, the lists were either just kind of running Zapdos with some other non-GX single prize attackers, or they were running a thin line of the Jolteon GX that we reviewed on this um, Rare Candy Roundup. So if you're interested in seeing more about that before we talk about it in regards to team up, you can definitely go back and check out that last video. Speaking of Team Up, Team Up is another huge set that we are going to be starting our set review on recently, and we have seen all of the tag teams from the set so far. The six tag teams are all the tag teams that we expected, except we have not yet gotten the rumored Buzzwell Feramosa GX tag team, but the art for all these tag team GXs are just beautiful. The If you look at the secret rares, which we can put a link to all of those in the description, definitely check out all those cards. I'm not going to go too deep into them just because since this was a full set release, we will cover all of our thoughts on these cards in the um, set review. But there are some really cool reprints. Uh, my personal favorite being Pokemon Communication, also getting a secret rare, as well as a new Brock's Grit getting a full art, and then a spiritual reprint of Steven's Advice in the form of Erica's Guidance, I believe, is the name of that card. Um, 
just being able to draw a lot of cards and Erica's Hospitality, my apologies. Also for Team Up, we've gotten the Ultra Beast with Pikachu and Zekrom on it. The cool thing with this is that we have a new energy design, which is always something fun to see. Looks kind of like a metallic, almost Pokedex shape like thing. And then the GX marker, like how the Ultra Beast GX marker changed to red. This one is yellow and it says Tag Team on it. So that is pretty cool. I always pick up an Elite Trainer box of every single set just as something fun to collect. So I'm excited for that. But uh, we did get one more GX though that will be, it's uh, in Japan's Sun and Moon 9A for Night Unison. It is Gardevoir and Sylveon GX. Going to go over this card because we are not going to talk about it in the team up set because it's going to be in the next one. It is a 260 HP Fairy Basic Tag Team. The first attack for one colorless. You search your deck for two Fairy Energy and attach them to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. So this is Geomancy again, which is really exciting. Just being able to get more Fairy Energies in play. Definitely, let's see what we can do with that in these other two attacks. So, the next attack for Fairy Fairy Colorless is Kaleidostorm. I love that name. I hope that that's the name that we get in English. Is 150 damage and you choose any number of energy attached to your Pokemon in play and rearrange them in any way you like. So you can move the energy from your active Gardevoir and Sylveon GX to the bench or you can choose to leave them active. So this could be cool and maybe like a max potion flip back and forth strategy. Um, but let's see what this GX attack does. The GX attack for Fairy 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 Plus is Miracle Magical GX. For 200 damage, if you have an extra three energy attached to this Pokemon, your opponent shuffles what the card believes to say hand we can't see the translation perfectly because of the where the hand in the picture is covering it into their deck so for fairy 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 you do 200 damage and then if you have three extra fairies your opponent shuffles their hand into their deck that seems very difficult to use for that effect i'd be much more willing to use the gx attack of say pikachu zekrom gx and get six energies on there so overall still a really solid card that i'm interested in seeing how it turns up whenever we get it in standard just sprinting through all the things that we have missed in the past few weeks but i think that is everything so if we miss something put it in the comments and i will make sure to uh talk about it in the next rare candy roundup but there's just so much stuff to talk about for team up and i am so excited i think that tag teams they have the opportunity to be broken but now that we've seen all of them we definitely have more ideas that they are kind of fairer than we expected. So I'm really excited to see how these three prize Pokemon shake up standard and cannot wait to check those out. But anyway, this is the fastest Rare Candy Roundup that you will ever hear. Hope to slow down the pace as we get to a more regular schedule. But there's so much information to cover that didn't have a ton of time to talk about everything in as full of detail. But make sure to check out the channel as we get more content up and running as Eric gets all of the clips and graphics back to where they're supposed to be. If you enjoy this content, be sure to check out our Patreon. We really appreciate all the support that you guys give us. There's some extra benefits on there, including articles that myself, Eric, and Kenneth write, as well as you guys are able to talk to us about what all we put up in the video. So definitely check out the Patreon and there will be a link in the description below. And this is Xander Bennett signing out. Thank you.